What I'd like to do, Elizabeth, is to have it out with you about our fleece preparation. We're going to have what my kids would say is a discussion. Let's have a discussion. There's lots of things we disagree on, isn't there? There is. Most things. Just about. There's one thing I can say we both absolutely agree on, though, isn't there? What's that? Our love of Shetland fleece. Oh, absolutely. It's the best breed there is, isn't it? You can see a fleece opening like that. And I will open that up in strips. Taking a hold of the tips, outside tips, and pulling apart. Because we're working in Shetland, it's a primitive fleece, which means it hasn't been selectively bred to get rid of some of the primitive traits. So on all of our Shetland, you've got what they call the rise, and it's there, that piece. You can see it very well there, there. And I'm going to pull this off. So if you hold on really tightly to the tips and pull, this just comes away. And do you go through all of this? This for the whole fleece? For the whole it? fleece. That must I take took you out the rice. No. But if you leave this in, it causes lumps. Of, of course. And that's what makes nips. Nips, yeah. I then tease this out which is just opening it up. So I look forward to this. She's never watched this whole process I that I do. Not First time I put it in, I touch it. When I start, I touch it like that, and then I'm feeding it on this front drum, but I'm touching it with the back of my fingers. So, there we go. <laughs> Exactly. Get it done. You know, if you've got the split where you take it off, and there's lots of different ways of removing this, I pull a bit and pull another bit. Okay, so you're pulling that, but you're not but actually I don't releasing it. I don't separate it until I've got everything up, yeah. and then I turn this so the chat point is facing down. Yeah. So if my hand slips. This is going to score my hand. It's not going to go in. Yeah. That's a health and safety thing. And then I pull this whole thing up and over. And I put, slide that pointer in and pull it up. Slide and pull up. Neela will definitely do this differently. And then turn. That's the back off. Uh, so what do you do next, um, Elizabeth, now that you've got this um, homogenizing bat? <laughs> um, this, the colours are starting to mix together. But you can see it's a bit of a mess. It's not like a, like it's a, a bat. It's greasy. Of course it's greasy. Because it's greasy fleece. And then I taste it out. And uh, I tasted it before I came here. And I actually put grease on it. Oh, Okay. Is that because it was a bit older? Um, no, 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 no. Cause I always grease. I always add extra grease. So this, I'm going to add grease again here. And then I roll this, just as if it's a bat come off hand carders. This gets drafted out, ready to go on the next time, the second time. So switch on and go. So here we 
have two bats. Just to see the difference. That's the, the bat the first time it went through. Ah. In a zigzag. Yeah. And young would be really good for making felt. Because it's all the yeah, ball, yeah, yeah. it's all in layers yeah, intertwined. Yeah. But so for woolen spinning, you don't want something like this. You still want something like this. You still want something like this, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So then that is a bat. It's second time round, fair and straight, and all the fibers are lying in this direction. Mm -hmm. But you will still um, divide this in, in eight, four or eight, and roll it so you're spinning woolen. Exactly. Uh, these are all natural colors of Shetland. Uh, this is an uh, a Shetland that I dyed uh, with an in, in an indigo vat. So I thought of just putting together these colors in a gradient, and I will add some additions, exotics as I describe them. Here we have uh, kid mohair, tassa silk. Sorry, that's mulberry silk. Tassa silk. This is linen, um, carded cocoons, um, kid mohair locks, that's a linen and silk 50-50 mix. These are the devil when they go into your carder, um, a little bit like glitter. glitter. <laughs> they're hard to get out but they're uh, quite effective because they make the final yarn a bit more tweedy so that's a uh, silk north. What are you making, Elizabeth? I'm making a pretty pair of mats, wrist warmers. But basically what I'm doing here is, sorry, I wasn't doing that right. I'm pulling it out so it forms a long thing. I'm trying not to say worm. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to use the word snake, but you get the idea. So when it's, gets to a particular length, I then just roll it very loosely. Now, in mine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to card all of the colours separately for the first time through. So I'll start with this. And I go back and forth as well, and I must have got that from you. Because there's no other way, no other reason I would do this. Down a bit. There's either a wallpaper brush or a particular burnishing brush. So, I mean, this is not a particularly bonny bat. But it's the first time through. But it's the first time through. Because it was a do whatever they wanted to do. I separate it. But I just go, I don't make it hard for myself. I just go into four lengths. So you're drafting now, it just the same way. So I'm you, drafting you, it out. You're not rolling. I roll mine first. You're dividing in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And then draft out. So I'm just going to pull out. I try and pull out about a half a staple length. So when we're layering up and making the different colours, 
I think what's more important than the actual colors themselves is the proportion of color. So the proportion of colors makes the ultimate bat. And I think it's the way that you use the distribution of the colors that um, can make or break a bat. I'm going to be trying to make it from light to dark. stopping to look and see how my yarn is building on the teeth because really when it reaches the top of the teeth nothing else can go in so I'm always conscious about that whilst at the same time trying to bail on as much as I possibly can. Tie in so that there's a hint of the indigo throughout the bat here but I want predominantly I think in my head for it to be about here so dark blue Grey into far into white. This is for the two by two rib card rib thing. And this silk is, and all the additions is built up throughout the depth of the bat. On the bottom of the bat is just wool because I wanted to lay the base down on the corridor. So you'll see how the gradient is going from one color to the next. So Elizabeth, that's my bat. I do have the most beautiful Shetland yarns in it, but I also have a few exotics. I've put in some gold and this lovely goldy green just to put in tiny, tiny little highlights. Again, about color being the proportion of color being key. And of course you'll work with that in the same way, but when you knit it. When I knit it, yeah. You're doing your design and then your bat. Exactly. I'm doing my design and when I get to the yarn to the needles. Yeah, we got glitter. So it's just one piece. We'll get rid of that. <laughs> 